I find them refreshing because he's a conservative. He is an extreme conservative in a very young and liberal campus. I try to deal a lot with, I think, the faulty way of thinking that's in the culture. If you want to save souls, why don't you take your butt down to the prison and save some souls there? And in this, and in this preoccupation with sex uh, and the sex of these students. I don't think you should be so annoying because it's very um, scary if I'm scared to come in contact with him. Well, the big message is, is that Christianity is the one true religion. And Orthodox Christianity is the true expression of Christianity. He's very effective in delivering his message to students um, who are just kind of passing by. That he says some particularly uh, inflammatory or controversial thing. Um, the way he is doing it is not very um, plausible. I understand that if you're going to come out here and tell people what they don't want to hear, that they're going to take exception to it. And... They don't need to listen to this. According to the American University of Professors, on a campus that is free and open, no idea can be banned or forbidden. Although this is said to be true, many argue that free speech is not truly available on the Penn State University Park campus. The Foundation for Individual Rights in Education gave Penn State a red light rating, meaning that there is at least one policy in place that restricts free speech. The policy in question states that harassment is forbidden on campus. Harassment is defined by the university as conduct that detrimentally affects the individual in question and would detrimentally affect a reasonable person under the same circumstances. Although it seems like these rights are limited on Penn State campus, one figure has still remained prominent throughout the years, the Willard Preacher. The preacher's tactics of screaming and insulting those around him have not been considered harassment, yet many individuals feel as if they are victims of his banter. However, few people realize what his true goals of his method actually are. His methods may be controversial, but is his presence at Penn State at all successful in meeting his goals? Well, I became Christian in August of 1982. And there was somebody doing this before me by the name of Bro Coke. He started in 1977. And he... Um, was instrumental in part at least in me becoming Christian and so when I became Christian I used to kind of I would come out here hang out with him and talk to people and so on and by November of 1982 I began to believe that God wanted me to do what he was doing and so um, middle of November 1982 I started to do it I've been doing it ever since he has found salvation and controversy has found him here at the bottom of these steps 22 years ago, Garrison Patel, the man we all know as the Willard Preacher, took over for Clarence Brocope and began preaching in front of the Willard Building. We all know him to be a religious fanatic, but who is the real Willard Preacher? In 1979, Gare began his Penn State career. Like many other students, he was obsessed with the party life. He quickly got involved with drugs and alcohol, which began interfering with his schoolwork. One day, his life changed when he walked to Brocope as he was giving a sermon, sending him down a path of enlightenment and salvation. After watching Cope for some time, Gary eventually began preaching his own sermons. Throughout his years as the Willard Preacher, Gary has gotten in countless arguments with people, and many despise his presence. Despite what many people may say, others know Gary as a loving man with a wife and four children, and refer to him as one of the most down-to-earth people you will ever meet. He has a purpose, even if it's just to get people to think about what it is that they're doing with their life. Most people kind of live in the moment, and they don't think about the reasons they do things. So it's, to me, it's important to have a voice out there that says, think about these things, you know, and, and do something. Unknown to many, the Willard Preacher is a published man. Released relatively recently, The Christian vs. the University is a short guidebook in the format of an email correspondence between a fictional uncle and his nephew, who has just begun college in Penn State. As the nephew is presented with many situations that challenge his faith and confuse him, the uncle, played by the Willard Preacher, does his best to encourage and support the young adult with advice heavily laced with his own opinion. What is interesting about the Willard Preacher's book is that his tone in writing is uplifting and sympathetic towards the fictional nephew, 
making a contrast between what others have experienced in person. Here, at the closing of one hypothetical email, the preacher writes, Try and keep in mind that even though as Christians we don't always love everything about someone, or ourselves for that matter, we are to see the image of God in him or her, and seek to love him as would Christ. Are these words truly reflective of what the preacher says in person? The whole controversy of the Willard preacher is that he is often forcefully judgmental when preaching in front of the Willard building. Perhaps this is because speaking is much more spur of the moment and needs an extra factor that will shock passerby into paying attention. But what would the situation be like if the preacher always spoke as he did in his book? Would people be more inclined to convert to Christianity, which he stated was his main goal in coming to Penn State, if he spoke with a tone of love than wrath? Not only has the Willard Preacher preached on Penn State campus for about 34 years, he's also alive in social media sites like Facebook and his own website, thewillardpreacher.com. Through these mediums, he is seen to calmly and logically express his thoughts and beliefs. He doesn't directly attack anyone or in a violent manner opposite of real-life occurrences. Indeed, his posts are much less foul-mouthed, offensive, and harassment-sounding, which has stimulated replies and thoughtful discussion under his posts. This can be surprising news for some who only know and see people getting verbally attacked or getting defensive on campus. His personal website reflects the same deliberation and careful articulation of his views. He explains and provides links to justify his opinions. For an example, why liberalism is anti-Christian. He definitely sounds like a very conservative Republican and religious fanatic, but he behaves himself in the virtual world. Nevertheless, people express their own negative views of him based on real-life encounters on social media. Articles like this one here shows the reality that many Penn Staters do not welcome his presence or radical teachings on campus. Other opinions question his form of smooth but lecture style delivery, asking, Where is the love? Where is the hope? Christianity is a message of hope. In all the seriousness and controversial talk, it is surprising to know that there have been people who dedicate their time to this man. One is through mock Twitter posts. There are currently two fake Twitter accounts, at Willard Preacher and at Willard Preach, both aimed to poke fun at the so-called extremist character and beliefs, his preachings and actions. These posts are oftentimes humorous because they play on his reputation for being and saying eccentric and outrageous things. There are even internet memes made for this purpose of parody. These dedications of mocking Mr. Cattell add to the controversiality of the matter. People on one end of social media respect his arguments. Another group of people continue to judge and react negatively towards him, regardless of the way he presents his arguments calmly through social media. And there are those who find him and use him as a source of entertainment.